day. Question of the day. Bitcoin has hit, okay, this one is over 23K because <laughs> it's been a monster. Basically, Bitcoin's at 24K. What do you think is the main reason behind this run-up? Institutions and adoption, the maturity of Bitcoin and its blockchain tech, media coverage, people's fear of the rising inflation, the Bitcoin halving, or something else, right? Uh, Bill, what do you think is causing Bitcoin to rally? Okay, well, obviously, uh, institutional adoption, it's not media attention. Uh, if you look at the top Google searches for 2020, Bitcoin doesn't appear in any of them. No one has searched Google for Bitcoin this time in 2017. Uh, Bitcoin was the only thing anybody was interested in. So we're living in this polar opposite universe. Um, yeah. I, I think the other thing with Bitcoin is, like I said, it's become bigger than anybody could imagine, right? I mean, it's, can you imagine at this time last year, if I got on the live stream and said, tech CEOs would be calling each other out on Twitter to put their whole cash balance sheet in Bitcoin. I, I, I mean, the live stream would have probably ended five minutes later because everybody would have been <laughs> like, that's insane. Okay, yeah. <laughs> But that is what's happening. So it's institutional adoption and it's peer pressure. Yeah. It's like, if you don't have Bitcoin, you're invisible. You're not relevant. There's something wrong with you. Now we yeah. would love it if that would trickle down to the rest of crypto, but you know, yeah, so, I mean, so have to come in 2021. I'll add on to that. I think, as you said, institutions are definitely driving up the rally. But I think Ripple is also, or XRP, I should say, is causing the rally as well. Because Ripple has essentially been crashing after the SEC announced they're doing a lawsuit on Ripple, the company, for XRP, basically having a unregistered security offering uh, that's basically continuous. Plus also the officers, right? Uh, Brad Gullinson. And uh, who's the other guy? Carlson, right? Basically, the CEO and COO, basically the co founders. But if you notice, XRP has been dumping because hedge funds and funds who have been in XRP, they legally have to sell because they can't legally be in securities. So that's also causing additional sell pressure. And if you go to the XRP pairs, uh, on token metrics, we now have a market page on each token. So looking at the XRP market. On Binance, they do have mainly Tether, Korean Won, but there's also Bitcoin markets on large ex exchanges like Binance uh, and others, right? So I think all these people who are forced to sell XRP to Bitcoin, right? They're buying Bitcoin. So I think all that, because XRP is the third or fourth biggest cryptocurrency out there, or was, I should say. And now it's causing them to really, I mean, XRP to tank, but Bitcoin to rally because people are, are taking capital flight to Bitcoin. Funds who legally raise money from their LPs saying they can't invest in securities, they now have to legally sell, right? So I was going through the the document uh, based for the XRP lawsuit and I found it, I found it pretty interesting. Uh, let me see if I can find one of the pages I was looking at. Uh, please bear with me. So this is, an annotated document from Catherine Wu uh, on Twitter. But I went through her, her annotations um, and I found this, I mean, depressing to be honest. Uh, it's very hard to read this and not come away thinking that one, XRP is dead forever because what the SEC by filing this, they've told Ripple, the company, not to touch XRP at all. And for those who know, XRP didn't really do anything unless Ripple, the company, had a hand in it, right? Because they had market makers that were supporting the price, that were adding liquidity, which is what the SEC says. Uh, and basically, they were timing news and announcements with the market, which is against SEC and security laws. And if, the, if Ripple can't market make XRP, where does it go? I mean, because that's a huge market to support with no market makers. So... And they can't really do anything to prop it up because Ripple was propped up, but also suppressed in terms of rallying. Because right? anytime the cryptocurrency would rally, 
the, the market makers would sell to take profit. That's how they're able to cash out over one and a half billion, I think $1.3 billion in total Ripple has made from selling XRP onto the, the market through market makers. So yes, that takes away the pressure, the selling pressure, but also the support, the base, the market makers. So I think this could go very, very low, unfortunately, to our XRP army who's watching this, uh, our condolences. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you're long-term, they could be a bounce back, but I, I doubt XRP will be in the top 10 market cap next year, uh, by end of next year. Because imagine if the SEC lawsuit takes one to two years. Because I know XRP, Ripple, they're bringing the best lawyers and the SEC has good lawyers as well. So this could be a, a long legal match for a couple of years. So imagine two years with no market maker in XRP. I mean, it's very hard to be in top 10 with no market maker. I mean, honestly, exchanges are making the markets, but Ripple, because the token has no value, honestly, right? Uh, and was really being used. So the company was creating all the value. So the company can't create the value. It's, it's, it's going down, unfortunately, right? Uh, let's see what people have to say. Uh, Ian, in your opinion, is XRP a security or a currency? Uh, I'm no lawyer, but in my opinion, I've already said XRP has been centralized, right? Because the company owned more than 60% of the supply. So that's not really a decentralized cryptocurrency by the community's definition. And the fact that going through the SEC, SEC's argument, I think is a very strong argument. I'm, I'm no lawyer, but I think I would likely side with the SEC in terms of that. And then also exchanges now have to delist XRP. I mean, right now the speculation that Coinbase, all these big exchanges, they have to be listed because we can't list securities because no market makers and getting delisted from major exchanges, that does not add up to a top 10 market cap project at all. If anything, they might even get outside the top 50 or top 100 market cap. Anything is possible now in crypto because we've seen this in with BitConnect, right? Where it was top 10, top 20, went straight to zero. I'm not saying XRP is going straight to zero, but I think it's, it's it could decline 90%. So if you're an XRP and you've made money, I mean, ho, 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 Merry Christmas, buy yourself a nice gift, <laughs> but buy the missus something nice, cash out uh, and live to tell a, another day, or however that, that, that phrase goes. Bill, any thoughts on that? Uh, you're on mute. Living, living to fight another day is yeah. uh, an important idea for you know, the fans of XRP. Uh, our hearts do go out to these people, uh, especially since these actions are, you know, taken by a government that's on its way out. So this has been a tough government for crypto and uh, they're looking to add punctuation to the end. Uh, my hope is that, you know, it ends with XRP, that there isn't more of this piled on because these guys still do have roughly 30 days. Yeah. Now, I mean, you mentioned earlier Chainlink, and I've been hearing this as well from, well, not for Chainlink per se, but from lawyers, because we speak to lots of lawyers because we're in crypto. Uh, and they're telling me they're expecting the SEC to also have something similar for DeFi, because the SEC typically enforces or regulates through enforcement. Right? They basically enforce or file a case towards a company to show you what they view as non-compliance. So we haven't really seen this for DeFi. So people are speculating right now, I think it's still speculation that possibly Chainlink, because Chainlink raised from US investors, uh, didn't do any KYC, uh, to my knowledge, uh, unless, they, unless it was kind of behind the scenes, I don't know, right? Uh, or some people were speculating Uniswap, right? Um, but at this point, no, it's all just pure speculation, but one thing that's common I'm hearing amongst lawyers in the space is expect some kind of action in 2021 on DeFi. So, I mean, let's let's wait it out. Let's see what happens, but uh, let's have our fingers crossed, all right? Because we're all hoping for a great 2021 in crypto. So tell us what you think. Uh, what's your take on the lawsuit and regulation in crypto space with the SEC? Tell us what you think down below.